Hey everybody, I'm back to do yesterday's SmackDown review. This was August 27, 2021. This show was something else. I mean, it was, it was progressing a little... It was, I'll put it like this. This show did have some surprise and there was some things I want to talk about when it comes to it. But we gonna go right through, you know, right through this one, okay? Alright, so... Finn Balor and the Street Profits bring chaos to the Bloodlines family celebration. So that's how that was the main event of what happened at the end. Hmm. I got some things to say though. So let's start off. Becky Lynch returned to come face to face with several challenges. Following Becky Lynch's surprise return at SummerSlam, the man came around to SmackDown. The new SmackDown Women's Champion was unapologetic about her rather underhanded tactics and an impromptu match she had against Bianca Belair that led to her recapturing the blue brand. And then it ended up turning into a fatal four-way, just to let you guys know. Because she came out, uh, Bianca wanted to have a match with her. She said no. And, and then Bianca basically had to have a fatal four-way against Zelina Vega Carmella and Liv Morgan, you know, the same ones that she been wrestling this whole time. And yes, Bianca Belair did win it. It was a nice match, don't get me wrong, but I still feel like they really did Bianca Belair really wrong. And I do not like how Becky Lynch is trying to take this whole heel character like you're so bad when you were gone for a whole year that just don't make no sense to me it makes no sense to be gone for over a year to come back and beat someone who's been winning and winning and winning a lot during that time you was gone and something else i don't like here we go again with these lazy champions bianca comes out i mean uh, Becky Lynch comes out, wins in less than 30 seconds, and then here we go. It, it's almost a week later on SmackDown, and she doesn't even have a match, and she rejects it. While Bianca literally was having matches every week and was doing pro, pro pay-per-views every month and was having matches, hardcore matches, all of this, but Becky gets to come back and not even do anything, as you can see, and keep the belt while Bianca fights a fatal four-way match i know I, i'm still disappointed and yeah bianca won but it doesn't matter she shouldn't have lost like that in the first place it, it's no point of building her up like that just for her to lose in that fashion and then and then, and then don't even prove like you're a better champion like that don't make no sense like if you're a real champion act like it like why this is this is why I don't like Roman Reigns. Like how are you a champion but you barely do matches and you barely put in work. And you're not even really as over as certain people. But let's continue. Let's look at the promos. I'm just looking at things crazy, right? Edge and Seth Rollins shot their promos as if their feud is finna continue boring. Uh, the Usos confront Paul Heyman and that was actually interesting to me the fact that Paul Heyman he was kind of scared and worried like oh snap are they going to turn on me because I've been noticing that the Usos been away from uh, Roman Reigns and now magically today they're bringing them back and now all of a sudden oh there might be some beef with Paul Heyman so that was crazy okay dang I don't want to speed this up right I'm tr now I'm looking at promos now all right, Cesaro defeats Chad Gable by disqualification. This was not good because they've been doing this too repetitive. This has been very, very repetitive, right? It's like we've been seeing Chad Gable and Otis pretty much go against the same people. The only difference was Cesaro going against them, but the match ended in the same almost fashion. Like, we see this a lot, man. It's true where Chad doesn't finish matches and Otis comes in like a goofy heel and ruins the damn match i miss the old oldest I, i'm shocked they did that to oldest man oldest used to be so much more better okay i gotta skip that because you know i got a video Oof, yeah that's gonna be a surprise especially for those who didn't see it but know that uh baron corbin video is coming out soon then yeah king nakamura and rick boots defeat Dolph ziggler and robert rule all right, I guess they mixing it up a little bit. Uh, I mean, so now they're just tag partners now. Even though, I mean, come on, man. What's the point of giving Nakamura the Intercontinental title if you was just going to make him do tag matches? 
And then you're going against people who used to be the tag, tag you know, champions. I don't know, I just not that interesting. Again, ever since this whole King Nakamura gimmick came around, I ain't been feeling it too much. Or Rick Boos. I thought it was a little exciting at first, but I don't know. It's just not that. I, I hope it get better with them. But yeah, they picked up the win. Then we had Sami Zayn defeating Dominic Mysterio. Now that was different. Cause they, you see, they did mix it up a little bit tonight, like by putting Sammy against Dominic, and the Mysterios are still having their problems where they're trying to, you know, where Ray is still trying to teach his son like how to win, how to get the victories. You know, that's what it's really like when you really think about it. It's basically Ray Mysterio trying to coach his son to be as good as he was, but his son keeps failing. And that's, and that's kind of wild to me because, like I always say, man, when Rey Mysterio first came out, Rey Mysterio was damn good when he first came out. He didn't come out being kind of whack like Dominic. I mean, he was great when he first came out at a young age. People, even if you didn't know who he was back then, you just were still watching because you'd be like, man, this dude is really talented. But anyways... Yeah, he ended up losing, I think, pretty cleanly over Sami Sami Zayn. And Sami Zayn just basically stunned and flexed on him like he was just nothing right after the match. And then Dominic got upset at Ray. So, yeah, it's still looking like this uh, family thing might be uh, breaking up soon. Then you got Finn Balor invades Roman Reigns family celebration. So, this is pretty much like, I, see, I didn't say this was going to take that long. I ran it a little bit. But one thing I will say before I talk about what happened at the end, where was Brock Lesnar? Where, where was Brock Lesnar? See, this is the stuff I be talking about. How, how am I supposed to be geeked about y'all when y'all clearly showing that y'all ain't really full-time? Y'all not full-time. Y'all just coming for the hype. I mean, at least John Cena was going to SmackDown and Raw shooting promos, trying to do something. So John, I mean, so Brock Lesnar just pops out on uh, SummerSlam, and you don't even see him on SmackDown almost a week later, and you don't even see him at all. Okay. Anyways, so yeah, they was having a whole celebration, which I find to be a little weird because they knew that, that their old, like that old shit they was doing with them, they knew that shit was falling off. So they had to stop it. But now here they go bringing it back and acting like, oh, well, we're all champions. Duh, 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 duh. You know, Paul Heyman was shook. I'll read some of this. In the wake of Brock Lesnar's return, Universal, and they would bring Brock Lesnar up knowing he wasn't even there. Uh. Roman Reigns celebrated his historic victory over John Cena and the SummerSlam victory of his cousins, the Usos, before getting interrupted by Finn Balor. The Prince challenged Reigns to a universal title match before attacking the head of the table and sparking a three-on-one attack by Reigns and the Usos. Yeah, that was wild. That was wild. Because Balor came in there and it was he was by himself. And he was like, man, I want my match. That kind of caught me off guard a little bit. It did. Because he just got the swinging on Roman. They got the firing on Roman. He didn't care if all three of them was there or not. But you know all three of them was there. So they started jumping on him and beating on him. You know, it, it was three against one. But then out of nowhere, that was until the Street Profits emerged to even the eyes and sent the Usos heading for the hills as Reigns and Heyman took their leave. And here we go again, and why you can't trust Roman Reigns. Here y'all go. Y'all was getting beat up. Street Profits came in to help Finn Balor because he was getting jumped. So now it's a fair fight. Now it's three on three. What happens? The Usos start getting their ass kicked. What, what happens? Roman just leaves. He just leaves. Matter of fact, that's him getting out the ring. That look like him getting out the ring right there. He just gets out. He's he's by y'all, by y'all. But I'm a champion. But I'm so big and I'm so bad. But I leave when my family members are getting jumped. See, see what I'm saying? This is ridiculous, man. I mean, at least they did not forget about the Finn Balor thing. At least they didn't. Even though I wasn't. Well, shit, matter of fact, I, I should be more interested in Finn Balor. Because at least he's not a, a super old star that they're just trying to bring back and, and really... Like, Finn might actually maybe have a chance. 
I ain't seen him work no matches though, so we gotta pay attention to that. Like, is he gonna work a match? Is he gonna do this or do that? I don't know. But that was my uh, SmackDown review. I guess I will give this show. Yeah, I'll probably rate this in between 2.5. It's not that great. It was all right though. Some things were all right, like some some of the promos and stuff. And let me see if I had to choose a match, which was the best match of the night. It probably would be the Fatal Four Away with Bianca. That was probably the best match of the night to me. Well, alright. We'll see what happens later on the next one, right? Hope y'all enjoyed this review, and I'll talk to you guys later.